Hello wrestling fans, I am Bobby Black from the Unsquared Circle bringing you the true face of pro wrestling in collaboration with WrestlingRevolution.com, the epicenter for all of your wrestling needs. I'd like to thank my new subscribers for this week, which is Tom the Diameter, who is formerly Radius 2X it seems like, Wop Wop 07, JBoy1761. Thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, go back, check out some of my older stuff. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Which I don't think I don't technically have a Bobby Black Facebook, but you can follow me on Twitter. Buy the t-shirt. Take care. Where you're at. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, I'd also like to thank people who left comments on last week's SmackDown review, which is Corn Math, Classic 1333, DW Squirtle, and Ecstasy69. Thank you guys for commenting. I love all of your guys' feedback. I want to interact with you guys as much as possible. Um, if you guys are, I know some people have been asking me if I'm ever going to do Raw reviews. Probably not. However, the only place you will ever be able to see me do a somewhat of a Raw review is um, Monday nights we have a show on Wrestling Revolution and Top Rope TV called. Uh, or, yeah, Top Rope, on Blog TV called Top Rope TV. And afterwards we do like a Raw recap, which is just like a 10 minute review of what happened on Raw. I'm, from time to time, like usually every other two, every three weeks, I'm on there as one of the co-hosts of the Raw recap. So head to Top Rope TV, I'll put a, a link in the description box. You can go there and I'm, you know, in there. It's basically, Top Rope TV is basically a place where all the Revolution members can come together and give a review. And, and, you know, usually try to keep it about to three people. Um, also, you can check out my blog talk radio, Unsquared Circle, uh, which we just did a review of Hardcore Justice and S Summer Sham, or Summer Slam. Um, <clears throat> and also check out my uh, Summer Slam review. This past week I did a video review, and so, um, yeah, just check out all my crap. I mean, really, I, I do a lot of, of stuff to interact with everybody. I'd love to hear your comments. All right. Um, well, let's jump right into SmackDown. Get ready for the SmackDown! Get ready for the SmackDown! Hey, you're gonna react when you're putting your back back! Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the SmackDown! This week's SmackDown is in Bakersfield, California. Teddy Long starts off with an in-ring promo where he welcomes the new World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton. Orton says that his thing with Christian is done. So Long uh, announces that there will be a 20-man battle royal tonight for the number one contendership, which I'm usually a fan of these kind of battle royals for the number one contendership. It's a good way to kind of get everybody on the show and transition into a new number one contender because you know there's people who are going to get eliminated early on. And it's also a good place to try to get people, you know, in the spotlight a little bit. Uh, Cody and Ted come out for a priceless reunion, which actually this was a really good promo between uh, Cody and Teddy, only because Cody talked for a while, then Ted took the mic and started talking about something, and then Randy Orton just RKO'd him, and that ended the segment. So it was it was kind of a weird reunion for the uh, priceless gang. So... Cody Rhodes then complains, tells Teddy that he needs to do something about this, he demands that he do, does something about this. And he says, fine, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to go backstage. I'm going to make Randy Orton stand on one foot for ten minutes in the corner. Then I'm going to make him right out. I will not RKO Ted a hundred times. It's just, kind of, it's just kind of, I thought it was humorous. I'm just like, really? <laughs> then he says, well, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put you in a match next, since Ted DiBiase can't be in a match. And it's going to be against the former Intercontinental Champion, Ezekiel Jackson, and the IC title is going to be on the line. So we get our first match of the night, which is Cody Rhodes versus Ezekiel Jackson, a rematch for the Intercontinental Championship. I gave it two out of five Black Rangers. This was not as good as their first match. As a matter of fact, it kind of, I think this match kind of underdelivered for what these two guys, in my opinion, can do. Uh, Cody Rhodes, these two went back and forth. Of course, Cody hit, used the fast pace action. Ezekiel Jackson used the power game. Um, but where it really started to turn around was they were outside. Cody Rhodes kicked the steel steps into Zeke Jackson's foot. And then it kind of went downhill for Zeke from there. I'm pretty sure he had a beautiful disaster and then a crossroads for the win. So Cody Rhodes retains the Intercontinental title. Yay! 
Second match of the night, which is Tyson Kidd versus Justin Gabriel. This was a great fast-paced match. These guys do a really good job at working together. I'd like to see more of this type of fast-paced fast action. Um, this match got decent time. I gave it 3 out of 5 Yellow Rangers. In the end, Tyson Kidd tries to hit a superplex on Justin Gabriel, but of course Justin pushes him off the top rope and he lands in the perfect position for the 450 splash. It's 450 for the win. Nothing too incredible, but it was still a, it was still a good match. Third match of the night, in my opinion, which is the match of the night, which would be um, ADR versus Daniel Bryan. This match was actually really good. Um, these two guys went at it really well together. There was a lot of ground and pound action. There was a lot of submission work. There was a lot of technical wrestling. These two guys worked really well together. I think this this was a great matchup. I gave it five out of five Red Rangers. It, it gave me on TV. It gave me everything that I wanted in a match of this caliber. You know, SmackDown's Money in the Bank versus the WWE Champion. I think ADR is going to be a good WWE Champion. If you want to know how I feel about the whole ADR, you know, being WWE Champion thing, check out my SummerSlam review, or you can listen to my SummerSlam radio review that I do with uh, Jericho Holic and the Block from WrestlingRevolution.com. But there was some nice aggression in this match. I like the new haircut for Daniel Bryan, and I like the aggression that Daniel Bryan is showing in this match. It's just it shows that you know he can. He can, you know, he's got that aggression still that he had in ROH. I've seen some of Daniel Bry Brian Danielson stuff in ROH, and he had that aggression, especially when he was a heel. So I, I'm really, uh, Grim would be proud of me that I'm mentioning ROH in one of my reviews. Uh, the one thing that hurt this match, and I, as I said, I gave it a 5 out of 5. I don't hold this against the wrestlers. I hold this against the commentators. The commentators were way too overbearing in this match. They were arguing back and forth, and Cole was just being loud, and... I mean, Cole was arguing with Booker, then arguing with Daniel Bryan, then arguing with Booker. It just, or arguing with, my yeah, Michael Cole, which is, Michael Cole was arguing with, what's his name? Josh Matthews, Michael Cole Jr., uh, Booker T. They were just arguing so much, and it's just like, come on, man, really? This, this just isn't, it's too overbearing. I mean, if you want to be a heel commentator, that's fine, but don't kill the match because of you arguing. I had to kind of turn my speakers off and just watch it for a while because these guys, I had to, well, I had to go back and turn my speakers off and watch it for a while because I couldn't get over these commentators just, yeah, blah, blah, blah. it's just like, dude, shut up. I mean, not shut up, but like, be a commentator, not a, whatever he was. Uh, in the end, Daniel Bryan goes for that front chancery submission that he's been, you know, implying recently to show that he's very submission submissionly diverse, but uh, ADR gets out of it, he rams him in the corner, gets out of it, he hits a vertical suplex, and then locks him in the armbar for the clean win. I really like the ending, because, I mean, Daniel Bryan hit one of his submission finishers, ADR got out of it cleanly, I mean, Eddie Munster wasn't even really involved in this match, period, at all, um, so... Daniel Bryan got out, of, or ADR got out of it cleanly, locked in the armbar cleanly, got the tap cleanly. It was a great match. I mean, I don't know why you'd, you know, I, I know you don't want to have your WWE champion lose to the just the Money in the Bank winner on SmackDown, but Daniel Bryan, in fairness, is a SmackDown superstar, and ADR is not. But, whatever. It was a great match. I, I enjoyed it. I recommend anyone watching it. Match four of the night, which is the surprise of the night, which is Kelly Kelly and AJ versus Alicia Fox and Natalia. I give this four out of five Pink Rangers. This was a good Divas match because Alicia Fox and Natalia are great women's wrestlers. And AJ is starting to prove to me that she is a great women's wrestler. And AJ was in for most of this match. So it seems like, you know, a lot of this match was good because AJ was in most of the time. Um, Alicia Fox and Natalia did some great tag team work. I kind of wish Alicia Fox would join the Divas of Doom stable and just, you know, and just start tearing these people apart. But it looks like they might be going for an Alicia Fox face turn, which I don't agree with. I think Alicia Fox is a great heel. Former Divas champion, too, might I add. Um, AJ and Natty work it well in the beginning together. As I said, she, AJ's starting to prove to me that she's a good women's worker. And she's kind of cute, too. Uh, AJ finally gets the tag into K2. Kelly Kelly. Um, and then in the end, and this one's for the most extreme wrestling in Chronics, Kelly Kelly hits the Hooked on Chronics to get the win on Alicia Fox. Then Natalia gets in the ring, and Natalia's pissed off, and they're shoving back and forth, and these two really just, basically, as I said, kind of, Natalia lo uh, beats up Alicia Fox and locks in a sharpshooter on the outside. Kind of looks like Alicia Fox face turn, but I I'm kind of hoping not. I kind of hope Alicia would have joined the, the Divas of Doom. So, it was a good Divas match, I have to admit. 
Next up, we go to the main event, which is the 20-man Battle Royal. I gave this 3 out of 5 Green Rangers. It was a pretty good Battle Royal. Uh, the early eliminations were Trent Beretta, Yoshitatsu, Johnny Curtis, Zack Ryder, Boo, Cody Rhodes, Big Zeke, and then Mark Henry scoop slammed the Great Khali out of the ring. Good way to show the power of Mark Henry in this match, and it's not like everybody teamed up on Great Khali to get him out. Like Mark Henry is a believable person to get rid of the Great Khali. The Great Khali was protecting Jinder Mahal through through a lot of the beginning of this match, and uh, I found it really funny in the beginning and the early goings was that uh, that. Uh, Everybody attacked Mark Henry in the very beginning, and then he just, you know, blew everybody off, like, doing the whole, you know, Hulk Hogan, Dragon Ball Z thing, whatever. Um, the mid, the mid match eliminations was Heath Slater, Justin Gabriel, Jimmy and Jay Uso at the same time, uh, Ginger Mahal, Ted DiBiase, and Tyson Kidd. Um, all, and then of course at this point Mark Henry had rolled under the ropes outside the ring, and he was basically like beating up everybody who was eliminated, which I like. You know, you want to make Mark Henry this monster heel. He's just being a mess out of everybody, and that's what you got to do. Uh, but not not too much to these eliminations. And then, of course, the late eliminations, which would be Wade Barrett, Sheamus, and then uh, finally Mark Henry eliminated Sin Cara after several attempts, just gorilla press I mean, him over the top. Um, I know that there's two people I missed, and if you people can tell me who I missed in the comments, that's fine. I really didn't feel like going back and watching it all over again just to see who I missed. I mean, I, I documented everybody that I saw eliminated. There's two people who I missed. You know, they must not have been that important if they were eliminated. Um, but the winner being Mark Henry, this is good. For number The only thing I, I disagree with this on is they were just building a good feud between Sheamus and Mark Henry. It's like, Sheamus and, it's like, Sheamus is just going from feud to feud. I mean, first they started him with Wade Barrett, then they put him in this Mark Henry thing. Now, who knows? Now, now Mark Henry is going to be the number one contender. I, I kind of really wish they would build Sheamus in a good feud. I kind of wish they would go back to Sheamus and Wade Barrett, because that was the original feud that they started. That's the feud that I wanted to see. Um, I mean, Daniel Bryan and Wade Barrett was an excellent match at SummerSlam. I'd say it was probably almost match of the night, but... Or Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan. I hope I said that right. But... I, they're just, it seems like they're getting lost with Sheamus, and that really pisses me off, because Sheamus is a great, great talent. I mean, if anything, I think maybe, well, I guess that would have made sense if you have a face world champion. I was going to say Sheamus versus Christian, but, you know, Orton versus Mark Henry makes more sense. Um, yeah, maybe Sheamus can get in a feud with Christian now. I was hoping Sheamus would get in a feud with Wade Barrett again. You know, maybe have Daniel Bryan feud with Christian. I think that would be a great set of matches right there. But SmackDown really needs to sit down and solidify their feuds. They can't just sit there and go, oh, well, we're going to throw these people this month, these people this month, these people this this week. They need to solidify their feuds, and they need to work on those feuds. Because that's the only thing I'm really, really starting to worry about with SmackDown about. I gave this night four out of five Blue Rangers. Um, this was a good night of SmackDown. There were some great matches. The five out of five uh, Daniel Bryan ADR match was great. Um, a lot of the matches, the only one that I felt under-delivered was the opening bout, which was uh, Cody Rhodes and ADR. Uh, Christian wasn't on the show at all today, which kind of upsets me, but it's kind of good to do that separation with Orton and um, with Orton and Christian, so maybe Christian could take two or three weeks off and then come back and maybe start the feud with Sheamus or Daniel Bryan. As I said, that, that's where I'd like to see SmackDown go with it. Um, this week was a pretty good week of SmackDown, I, I have to admit. Uh, some good some good matches, some great storytelling, and that's about it. Go to WrestlingRevolution.com, the Epic Center for all your wrestling needs. Uh, I'm on break there, but there are still plenty of people there updating the site, and I guess that's it. I'm Bobby Black, and I am...